Hi, I'm Jack Buffington for RobotBrigade.com. This is another video in my series of videos about analog electronics. And in this video, I'm continuing on from my previous one, and I'm going to talk about more advanced features that you'll find on oscilloscopes. Um, so let's take a look at this one here. Okay, so this oscilloscope um, is currently displaying two waveforms. One of them is a sine wave and the other is a ramp. And um, let's look at some fancier stuff that you can do with, um, with channel one. And I'm just going to get this in the position here and set things up. Oops. Okay. All right, so here I have a sine wave. And uh, I talked about coupling for your trigger in the previous video, but in this one, uh, now we're going to look at um, your channel one menu, and channel two menu will be exactly the same. I have a uh, sine wave, but it has a DC offset. And you can see that because of this little uh, one with an arrow indicates where your ground level is. Um, if I were to set my coupling to AC, you'll see that the sine wave falls down so it's evenly balanced over that, uh, uh, that ground level. And if I go to ground, that just displays a line telling me where ground is. Uh, which is sort of not really that necessary because you already have a little indicator on the side of the screen. Um, let's say I'm adjusting my volts per division. Right here it's set to course and so I have pretty big jumps. But I can set that to fine and now I can really hone in on uh, on uh, a signal. Um, for my probe, this tells uh, the oscilloscope what do I have my probe set at. So most probes have a one times and a ten times uh, divider on them. So if you want to measure a uh, ten volt signal and you have it on a times ten uh, voltage, uh, what that does is it allows Basically, your oscilloscope will register it as one volt. And so um, you have to tell the oscilloscope if you're going to take accurate measurements uh, that it has a times 10 probe on it. Invert flips the waveform upside down if you should want to look at it that way for some reason. Um, math menu is kind of neat. Um, so uh, this one's probably going to look really weird with that ramp, so we'll just disconnect. Um, basically what I can do is I can add uh, the different channels together, uh, or I could subtract them. Uh, right now I'm not doing anything because I've disconnected channel two. Uh, I can multiply and I can divide, uh, no I guess I don't have to divide. Here I'm doing a fast Fourier transform. And if you're not familiar with that, uh, what the fast Fourier transform is doing is it's giving you frequency, starting with low frequencies down here and going up to high frequencies, and uh, amplitude. So right here, this little peak is showing me uh, what is going on in my channel one, which is a sine wave. So it's a fairly pure sine wave. And uh, it's just a cheap function generator that I have uh, connected to it right now. Anyway, there's a, a peak over here. If I raise that frequency up, you'd see that little peak start to move over to the right. Uh, I haven't played with this enough to actually know uh, what frequency I'm seeing up at the very top. Uh, but we could figure that out uh, in a little bit with something called cursors. And uh, I'll just get back to uh, uh, my sine wave. 
and I'm going to uh, show my cursors now and the, where'd they go? Okay. Um, here I have cursor one and uh, let's see if you can see that. Yep. Okay. So basically if I want to measure something on my oscilloscope, the most accurate way would be to, uh, shoot, set this here. Okay. Make my waveform as, um, as big as possible on screen. Yeah, I guess it's too big now. Make it as big as possible on screen, then go to my cursors and um, position them. So if I want to measure this sine wave, I could do that. And then I need to switch to cursor two. Some oscilloscopes have a separate dial for each cursor. Um, and some of them allow you to move both cursors at the same time. So uh, whenever you move this line, it always moves the other line, but you can move that line independently. Um, it all depends on the brand of your oscilloscope. But here we go, I've got this, and it's telling me my delta V is 8.48 volts. So that's a little more accurate than the eight volts that I told you in the last video. Um, I can also do time. So let's say I wanted to measure to see uh, how long it takes for this waveform to happen or how many hertz it is. Uh, my goal here again is to get my waveform as big as possible, in this case in time. Um, I'll just call this good enough here uh, and go to my cursors and here I'm going to go to the peak here and switch to my other cursor and go to my peak here, which is roughly there. And I have this set for a one kilohertz signal. And you can see that my uh, delta T is uh, one millisecond. So that means that there's a thousand of these happening a second. And that's what the very next line is telling me is that um, it's a one kilohertz signal. And uh, uh, it's also telling me uh, the delta V between these two points. So I, if you can see here, there's a little plus where each one of these is. I'll adjust this down to the other peak. And it will be telling me uh, 8.32 volts uh, from the uh, one peak to the other. Um, so you can do other things. Uh, oh, uh, sorry. With cursors, you just have time, amplitude, and off. Um, we can also go to measure that uh, you can set up different things to measure uh, things automatically for you. So here it's giving me probably a more accurate um, estimate of the uh, frequency, and it's saying it's 1.0. It's bouncing around, but 1.009 ish. Um, and I could set this up so that it is, oh, it's already doing it. Channel one peak to peak is 8.64 volts, 8 point, whatever, it's bouncing around. That's another type of thing that you can do. And let's see. Uh, oh yes, uh, X, Y mode. This uh, right now it's doing Y time. So Y being your amplitude and uh, T being your time. You can also go into XY mode, and let me grab this sweep again. I don't quite know how this is going to work, or look. I think it'll probably look like a big block. Uh, yeah, kind of a block. Um, so basically what it's doing is um, one of the channels, uh, I guess uh, channel one is giving me my X, and channel two is giving me my Y and uh, kind of a fun thing that you could do if you're so inclined would be that you could turn this into a TV by making a couple ramp generators that were synced with each other and, uh, and with a video signal as well. And then on the back of this is a uh, 
uh, Z input that can vary the brightness of the signal. And so you could actually watch black and white TV on your oscilloscope, uh, as long as it's an old NTSC signal. Um, and uh, you can also do things like displaying dots versus, uh, versus lines. Right here it's doing lines, but if I uh, change it to dots, you really don't see too much difference. Let's see if I... Yeah, there you can see it. If I zoom way, way, way in, uh, it's displaying dots. It's just not connecting the dots, but uh, if I do vectors, it connects them up. Um, Okay, so uh, important things to know, or a very important thing to know, is that your probes have common grounds uh, so that these two are actually connected inside. And if you try measuring where you have your grounds at different locations, it's going to screw up your measurements on here. Uh, I don't believe it'll hurt your uh, oscilloscope unless you're working in really high voltages. Uh, but uh, uh, it will mess up your measurements and your, your waveforms will look funny. And, uh, so be very mindful of that. Uh, it can cause a lot of confusion. Um, now let's talk about features of oscilloscopes. Uh, I, have, I have three different kinds here. I have, I have uh, two digital storage oscilloscopes. So this one and this one are digital storage oscilloscopes. And basically what that means is if I have a signal and it's coming in here, I can uh, stop that signal or freeze the display, disconnect my signal and it's still there. Um, and then I can zoom in and out of it and take a look at a single capture uh, as closely as I want to. I can zoom way in and look at, uh, there's a tiny little, uh, sorry, I'm looking at my preview monitor. It's not helping because it's all backwards. Um, anyway, I, there's a tiny little glitch on the top of that sine wave. Uh, I could zoom way in and take a look at that if I, that was something important to me. Uh, Another nice thing is that you can save out your waveforms. So let's say you're emailing a colleague and you want to show them a waveform. You can do that with a digital storage oscilloscope. Uh, ones like this will typically have a USB port on them somewhere. And ones like this you can just directly screen capture or uh, they often will have a uh, just save file uh, type thing. Uh, analog oscilloscopes. Uh, don't write them off even though they're old. Uh, I don't believe you can even get these brand new anymore, but I could be wrong. Um, this has been a workhorse for me over the years and I still love it. Um, yeah, don't write them off. And especially if you're getting going, uh, these can be had pretty cheaply off of eBay. Uh, Number of channels. This is a two channel one. This is two channels. This one's four. Uh, I think if you're getting going, you only want a two channel one. I bought this uh, because, well, I got it at an auction, so I, I got it cheaply. But uh, also, I was very interested in this one over others that they had because it had four channels. And I was thinking of using it sort of as a logic analyzer. and. I'd recommend against doing that. Uh, logic analyzers can be had pretty cheap, cheaply these days. Um, so, yeah, I would recommend just sticking with the two channel unless you really need more than two. Uh, this kind of oscilloscope is nice in that it can be portable. This one, uh, you can see I modified it at uh, some point so that I can take my laptop and this out and not have to beg anybody for a power cord and I could still service equipment out in the field with just a 9 volt battery. Uh, the downside of something like this, uh, even though it's nice and small, is that they can go technically obsolete. So I bought this one a number of years ago and you can see that its interface is a parallel port which 
you can no longer find on pretty much any computer. So I paid maybe 800 bucks for that and now it's worth about zero. So I'd recommend sticking with ones like these. This, this is pretty portable. I, I take it around with me now and uh, it's very handy. Um, it's not quite as handy as this one, but I can still use it and I'll be able to use this 20 years from now. Um, uh, okay, for uh, digital oscilloscopes, which pretty much all the oscilloscopes out there are now, uh, you need to be aware of bandwidth and samples per second. And your bandwidth is um, what is the maximum frequency no, that's not quite right. Uh, what is the frequency where the minus three decibel uh, point is? So uh, for low frequencies, you're going to have a um, very flat uh, response curve. So if I'm putting in a one volt peak to peak sine wave into this, I'm going to see one volt peak to peak on this. However, as I get up towards its uh, bandwidth uh, limit, it's going to start tapering off and uh, specifically this one is a 60 megahertz oscilloscope and so at 60 megahertz it is going to be three decimals down or 0 0.707 uh, times my input uh, voltage so if I was putting in a one volt peak to peak signal I would see 0 0.707 volt peak to peak on here um, another uh, the, the uh, samples per second now uh, basically that's how often it is taking a sample of data uh, from your input. Uh, this oscilloscope is doing it at one gigahertz so uh, that's that's quite a lot <laughs> uh, but uh, typically you want uh, your oscilloscope to be about 10 times its bandwidth limit. Um, cheaper ones will be less uh, and don't get suckered. I bought this when I was just getting going. This is actually my first oscilloscope. And um, uh, I thought, oh, okay, 100 mega samples per second. That's a 100 megahertz oscilloscope. Wrong. That was not right. Um, they actually didn't advertise. They probably did, but I, did, I missed it, um, what the actual bandwidth limit was. Uh, but I would suspect that this is actually more like 10 megahertz or so. Um, so if you're just looking at digital data, you can look at a pretty fast signal on something like this. Just don't expect that uh, if you're going over the bandwidth width limit, don't expect it to be full, uh, full uh, amplitude. And um, uh, let's see, cost, getting going with an oscilloscope. If you want to buy a cheap oscilloscope, uh, I think you can buy a brand new one. Uh, for maybe 350 bucks, uh, though I would keep your eye out for places that you can buy one used. Uh, eBay is a great place. Um, I've bought a lot of equipment on eBay, <laughs> and it's it's always worked out. Um, only once did I have trouble with that, and it was resolved. Uh, they have a pretty good return policy through eBay. Pretty much, the buyer is always right. Um, and I think that that does it for all of the, uh, yep, that's all the things that I have written down to talk about. So uh, if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more, take a look at uh, all the other videos that I have on robotbrigade.com. Thanks for watching.